Hi, and welcome back to my insect-friendly garden. Today, I'm going to talk about apple trees, which are one of my favourite subjects. I think every garden should have at least one apple tree somewhere, no matter how big or small it is. And you might be thinking, what's he talking about? I've only got a tiny garden, I can't fit an apple tree in. But apple trees come in all sorts of different sizes. It's determined by the rootstock. So um, almost every apple tree you might buy is grafted, it's in two parts. There's the roots and then the top, the, everything you can see has been, is come from a different plant and they've been spliced together, grafted. Um, and, and the different rootstocks um, grow at different rates and they control how big the tree gets. <clears throat> and most of my trees are destined to become full sized. They're on what's called an M25 rootstock, which is one of the biggest rootstocks. So the trees will grow to maybe 30 feet tall if I'm lucky. But if you've got a smaller garden, you can choose a rootstock to match. And some of the really small rootstocks um, are suitable for growing trees in uh, apple trees in big pots on a patio. Um, so pretty much anyone can squeeze in an apple tree of one size or another. And there's so many good reasons to grow an apple tree, or if you can, lots of apple trees. I've got a bit carried away and I got more than 50 apple trees in my garden, plus pears and plums and all sorts of, of other things. But I'm really lucky, I've got a, a two acre garden. Um, maybe you can only squeeze in one apple tree into your garden, um, and then you've got to decide which one, and there's a bewildering variety of apples available. Um, if you go to the supermarket, there's only usually about, I don't know, four or five varieties, and they're the same varieties all year round, in every supermarket. It's really boring. Um, Granny Smith's, Golden Delicious, Pink Ladies, all these kind of crunchy sweet but pretty boring bland apples. Where's the variety in that? In actual fact there are literally thousands of different varieties of apples. Most of them never make it to the supermarkets. Many of them kind of forgotten, uh, hard to get hold of. But there are some great online nurseries that will deliver you a beautiful apple tree cheapest and best time to get them is in the winter as bare root trees so they can ship them without any they dig them out the ground ship them to you wrapped up um, with their roots with no soil and you just have to plant them quickly anytime through late autumn winter um, and you can get a beautiful apple tree one or two years old for not much more than 12 or 14 pounds um, I'll stick the addresses of some uh, some of the good companies that I buy my trees from uh, at the end so how do you choose which variety to grow? Well, um, when there's such a diversity. Well, firstly, you need to think, is it an apple for eating, which I guess is most people, uh, what most people would want? Or is it uh, an apple for um, cooking? Or are you gonna make cider? Or do you want something that maybe you could use for, for all three, because you haven't made up your mind or you just want all three? Um, so I'm going to show you some of the different varieties that I've got in my garden, the ones that are fruiting in mid-October. Um, so come with me on a, on a tour of my apple orchard. One of the things to think about when choosing an apple is when it is ready for harvesting. Some apples flower earlier and fruit earlier uh, than others. Uh, so some start uh, ripening as early as late July in a warm summer and um, others aren't ready to harvest until late October, early November. If you want ones to keep through the winter to extend your uh, kind of apple eating, home apple eating period as long as possible, then you need to have one of those late uh, fruiting trees. So right now it's the, it's the middle of October, so it's kind of middle of the season. The early apples have finished. Uh, and the late apples are just coming on. Um, this is a mid-season apple, this is called Spartan. Look at these, these are absolutely beautiful, kind of purplish apples, they're gorgeous things. Um, forgive the sound effects, it sounds disgustingly loud, but they're a nice crunchy apple. 
really sweet really I like all apple trees are so e ridiculously easy to grow look how many apples there are on this tree I don't know if you can see them all but it's way down the trees actually bending over under the weight of the apples almost all apple trees they don't need any looking after really you just plant them it's, it's an amazing thing and they provide you with food every year and as they grow they lock up carbon in the wood and when they flower in the spring they look really pretty and they provide um, food for pollinators and of course the pollinators ensure that you get the apples so it's kind of wins all round um, so Spartan this is Spartan which uh, uh, is one of my favorite kind of mid-season nice sweet not super exciting but very beautiful very prolific um, kids really love them nice straightforward eater apple this is Adam's pear main um, nice old-fashioned variety a handsome apple with these um, little pits all over it um, is it kind of attractive I think they're beautiful anyway these are a bit firmer a bit more flavoursome than the Spartans they're also sweet but they're a bit more aromatic as well really lovely one of my favourites not quite my favourite though this little beauty is red Falstaff um, good kind of general purpose eating apple mid-season lovely handsome red apples one or two of them have got a bit of scab but on the whole trouble free uh, it, it's so prolific I don't know if you can see it. it's just a bit like the Spartan we saw earlier just covered in apples it, I always find it a sort of every year a, a pleasant surprise that you don't have to do anything to look after apples I don't prune my apples I don't spray them with anything um, the only thing I do is I usually pile a bit of um, grass cuttings around the base as a mulch um, once a year and that's it and every year you plant an apple tree and every year for the rest of your life you get the, the gift of delicious apples to eat isn't that cool this is rosemary russet so some apples have russeted skin it's partly it's kind of slightly rough and textured you can hear it when you rub your fingers over it um, and some people don't like the, the texture when they eat them I quite like it actually well, the flavour is great so rosemary russet is a Victorian variety and quite an old one it's quite sharp it's sweet and sharp at the same time I really like that bit of extra acidity um, gives it a bit of bite delicious hello Jeffrey you can have the ones that have fallen off don't worry this beauty is red Windsor lovely crunchy good all-round eating apple delish this one's Ribston Pippin uh, a nice old heritage variety these are these are quite dense apples it's like an entire meal in itself and almost kind of this scented and and slightly pear like really lovely this one is Darcy Spice spelt as in Mr Darcy um, it's an old variety at least 200 years old no one quite knows where it came from um, this is a really unusual apple um, not the most beautiful apple you ever saw um, quite small um, quite heavily rusted um, but with a really unusual flavor so they say so this is the first time this tree has uh, fruited and they're not quite ready you're supposed to harvest them really late traditionally on the 5th of November bonfire night you harvest the apples and put them in a hessian sack and hang them from a branch of the tree and then that's how they, they used to store them just hanging from the tree and you'd come out and collect some from a sack whenever you wanted to eat them uh, it should last right through the winter and they're said to have uh, a kind of slightly spicy um, flavor hence the name Darcy spice it reminds some people of mince pies apparently and uh, so I'm really looking forward in a couple of weeks time to uh, to trying one of these how exciting this little tree is Ashmead's kernel probably never heard of it it's um, a variety that dates from the 1700s um, so it's a pretty ancient apple variety um, and they're russeted all over they're small slightly misshapen greenish apples 
nothing much to look at in fact they'd they'd certainly never win an apple beauty pageant um, and they'd never appear on the shelves of your local supermarket because they couldn't compete with all those shiny red and bright green apples that you normally see but in terms of flavor these things are a world apart they are absolutely delicious if i could only eat one apple for the rest of my days which would be terribly sad then i might settle for these um so they're let me take one they're, they're one of the odd things about them is the the flavor seems to change from year to year slightly um many people say and and people disagree as to what they exactly they taste of they're quite perfumed and aromatic sweet crunchy and it tastes pineapple-y to me um maybe a little bit pear um, but really it's really delicious just just a whole world apart from supermarket rubbish um so Ashmead's kernel, maybe give one a go if you can get hold of one. This is the, the biggest apple tree in my garden. This is, this was here when I, I, when we moved in, it's probably been here 30 years at least. It's a lovely old mature Bramley's apple, uh, Bramley's seedling. It's a, it was a variety that was discovered in 1809. It was grown from a pip by a girl in Nottinghamshire and it's become kind of world famous as one of the nicest cooking apples uh, so this is one of the few dessert apples I grow in the garden this one tree provides hundreds of kilos of apples way more than we could ever use in crumbles or whatever um, anyway it's it's uh, a, they're really useful versatile apples um, before I grew my cider apples I use these for cider obviously they're good for cooking but they're also actually if you leave them so if you buy Bramley's in the shop, it's usually bright green. But if you leave them to ripen on the tree, they turn and they get much sweeter and they turn this lovely reddish colour on the side facing the sun. Um, and uh, I, I really like to eat them, although they are quite big. So um, another one to uh, uh, share with a friend. This is a little tree I planted last year it's my youngest apple tree bless it and uh, it's a thing called howgate wonder uh, it's intended to be a cooking apple um, but uh, it's also sweet enough to eat and really juicy uh, and i reckon would make a good cider although i've not yet tried it but it's supposed to and they're rather look at the size of these they're amongst the biggest apples you can grow absolute giants and they're said to keep very well. I'm going to have a go this winter, keep a few of these, see how long they last. But these are another one that should make it right through to spring. So you've got apples for cooking and juicing. For, if, you, if you plan it well, you can have apples for about nine months of the year really easily. Uh, from the earliest maturing dessert apples in July through to the, to the last stored apples, which make it through to kind of uh, early mid-spring if you're lucky and this is supposed to be one of the best varieties for keeping look at them very handsome so this is a cider apple this is dabinet which is an old english cider variety absolutely covered in these beautiful quite small lovely kind of dark ready purple apples um oh just drop one so they're not designed for eating. Ah, that's really unpleasant. So this is what's called a bittersweet. The cider apples typically have a bitterness to them. There are different types of bitter sharps, bitter sweets, sweets and so on, depending on what your individual preferences are. But I really love the, the bitterness that makes the apple inedible, makes a really nice flavour in cider, strangely. Sort of balanced by the the sweetness and the alcohol i guess anyway uh, this is this is as i say it's dabbing it old english variety um if you want to make your own cider it's one of the varieties you might think about but there are many many others um and often actually the juices are blended together to give a uh, a good balance um cider isn't everyone's cup of tea um but if you're interested in making it you will discover that it is 
a thousand times better than bought cider. Um, the, the horrible kind of pla plasticky strongbow stuff that you get in the pubs. Yeah, um, homemade cider, whole different ball game. Give it a try. One thing you need to think about when choosing which apple tree or trees to plant in your garden is pollination. Now, apples unfortunately are, are what's known as self-incompatible. They can't pollinate themselves. So pollen has to be transferred by a bee or another insect from one tree to a different tree to get effective pollination. Now, that doesn't sound too complicated. Um, but it's made a little bit more tricky by the fact that not all apple tree varieties flower at the same time. Um, some flower really early in late March, early April, and um, some flower right through into late May. And if they flower at different times, they can't pollinate each other. So to help you work out which ones can pollinate each other, apple trees uh, are divided into groups, six different groups, one to six or A to F, depending on um, uh, who you talk to, but it, the categories are the same. Um, so one is a really early flowering one and six or F is one of the late flowering ones. And ideally you need at least two trees from the same group to get good pollination. Uh, there are a few varieties that self-pollinate, so things like the Red Windsor I showed you earlier is happy to pollinate itself, so you don't need to worry about pollination with those. There are a couple of solutions to this, um, aside from having lots of different trees of each, and making sure there's at least two of each group. Um, one is to buy what's sometimes called a family tree, which is a, a tree which has actually had different varieties grafted on the same trunk. And they always graft on varieties that can cross pollinate each other. So then you only need one tree, but it's actually got two or three varieties of apple in that one tree. The other thing you can do is actually just not worry about any of this. Uh, in my experience, actually, unless you live in a spectacularly remote area, there are almost certainly going to be apple trees just over the fence in the next garden, um, which are going to act as a source of pollen that will pollinate your trees. So in almost any urban or, or village uh, environment, there are apple trees dotted around and there's usually one that will act as a pollinator so actually in reality you can usually get away with just planting what the heck you like and crossing your fingers and hoping for the best. So I guess you've got my unsubtle message. I'm a big fan of apple trees. You won't regret it if you grow one. Now's the time of year. Go online or go to your local nursery. Choose your variety. All these so many to choose from. Find one with the right roots so it doesn't get too big for your garden or whatever space you've got available. And you'll never look back. Happy eating. If you'd like to know more about bumblebees and other pollinators and the wonderful world of insects in general, uh, or about how to uh, make your garden more wildlife friendly, then you might enjoy one of my books available at all the usual places. Thank you.